Hi there, David with Sonance here, and in this video, I'm going to cover integrating our DSP amplifiers into a Savant system. There are two types of scenarios in which our amps would be used with Savant. In many cases, our amps are connected to a dedicated audio matrix, perhaps one of Savant's AVB solutions, such as an AOM8C or possibly an SSA3220D. In these applications, Sonance recommends using Savant's generic power stereo amplifier profile. This profile will allow the amp to be turned on and off using a GPIO or using the amp's built-in audio sense feature while allowing a dedicated audio matrix to handle volume and switching. The alternative method is to use the Sonance DSP amp to handle volume and switching. This can be done using the Sonance DSP amplifier profile and controlling the amp directly over IP. So let's cover the necessary steps to configure my Sonance DSP amp to handle volume and switching. I'll be using a DSP-8130 Mark II for this, but these steps also apply to the DSP-2150 Mark II and the DSP-2750 Mark II. First, I'm going to log into my amp and verify that the firmware is up to date. I'll do this by navigating to my amp's IP address, followed by a forward slash and the word update.htm. Note the capital U in update. I'll click the green update button, and if my network has internet access, I'll click on the internet option to obtain the latest firmware. If you don't have internet access, the latest firmware can be obtained by calling Sonance Technical Services at 949-492-7777. The minimum compatible versions of firmware are as follows. Here I can see the latest firmware file. I'll click the blue download link and the file will be downloaded and installed. This will take a minute or so, and once the update is complete, I'll be prompted to restart the amp and after a few seconds, I can refresh the page and move on. For IP control to work reliably, the amp's IP address must remain static. A MAC reservation, also known as a static lease, could be configured in my router, or I can disable DHCP in my amp and assign my address manually. To do this, I'll go to Advanced Setup, and I'll click the blue button next to DHCP. I'll click OK on the warning that appears, and several new fields will appear allowing me to configure my network parameters. I'm going to assign my amp a static IP address and hit apply. Now I can navigate to the new address and continue. Back under advanced setup, I'll go to the input output settings tab. And I'm going to name my outputs to reflect the rooms they're wired to. This isn't required, but it makes any future servicing much more convenient. Next, I'm going to adjust my output volume. Our DSP amps come out of the box at full volume for use in applications where volume is controlled by a preamp or a matrix. In this case, I'll be connecting sources with fixed volume outputs, so it's important to reduce the amp's volume before I begin to play any audio. Ultimately, this is the volume the end user will control through their Savant interface. This next step is also very important. I want to make sure that the amp will not turn on at full volume, potentially causing damage to my speakers, so I need to adjust the turn on volume. When using Savant to control the amp's volume, I actually want to disable the turn on volume feature in the amp completely. This way the amp will never try to automate its volume levels and Savant will be the only layer of control. To do this, I'll select the last option for each group. This tells the amp to simply turn its outputs on to whatever volume they were previously at. If you don't see this option in the turn on volume menu, it's likely because your amp is on older firmware, so make sure to go back and review that part of the video. If I want the zones to activate at a predetermined volume every time, I can go into System Monitor and configure that later. When using Savant to control the amp, the maximum volume should be left at its default of plus 12. Any volume limits should be set within Blueprint by inspecting the amp and going to the State Variables menu. Note that these settings are interlocked across channels within the same output group, which is why I only needed to set volume in four locations instead of eight. I can assign amp channels to any group, which gives me a lot of flexibility when it comes to using several channels in a single large zone, or perhaps smaller and even a single channel zone. Add to that the fact that Sonance amps are stable down to two ohms, and I can drive a room with a couple of speakers set to mono and wired in parallel. This adds even more flexibility. Now that I've configured my amplifier, I'm going to download the amp profile so that it can be added to my Blueprint config. 
To download the Savant profile, I'll go to Sonance.com and I'll navigate to the DSP Amplifiers page. At the bottom of the page, there's a link to download the profile. I'll click the link and the profile will be saved to my downloads folder. Now I'll unzip the file and I can see the profile as well as the image file for the component profile library. Now I'll open RacePoint Blueprint and go to Preferences, and under the Libraries tab, I'll select my Custom Profiles folder. I'll click the Import button, and I'll select the XML file. Now the new profile is available to be added to a configuration. Here I've got an existing configuration with a music stream and four zones with speaker endpoints. In the Component Profile library, I'll type Sonance DSP. The profile I just imported is the one titled DSP Amplifier. Sonance recommends using this new profile for all three DSP amp models. This profile was developed to replace the existing profiles and resolves issues around volume and switching latency. I'll drag the profile in, and I'll title it DSP8130 Mark II. And as with any profile, the first thing I want to do is review any included profile notes. Once I've read all the notes, I'll review some of the inputs and outputs in the profile. This profile includes all the IOs available on the DSP8130 Mark II, and is therefore going to have some extra IOs that aren't physically present on the DSP2150 Mark II and the DSP2750 Mark II. Next, I'm going to connect an audio source to my amp. In this case, it's a PAV-SMS2001, and it features Toslink and coaxial outputs. I've got a digital input module, or DIM card, installed in this amp. Now, I can see the connections are yellow, which is Blueprint's way of warning me that these are two different connection types and may not work. While this specific connection will generate a service and function as intended, a better practice would be to change the config to reflect that a digital input module is being used. I can accomplish that by inspecting the amplifier's card slots. And deleting the analog input module in the first slot. And replacing it with a digital input module from the drawer on the right. Now I can see that the connections are green, indicating compatibility with one another. Now I'll make my speaker connections to my four audio zones. I also need to make a connection to my network switch and input the IP address assigned to my amplifier. Once I generate services, I'll see my streaming music service available in all four zones. Now I can upload and test my system. Please watch the additional video covering advanced configurations with Sonance Amps and Savant.